Poo. I was just talking to your mom, and I was thinking that I should tell you a story. And I want to tell you a story, an old story, a story that I learned when I was about your age, back when I was on the New Carrollton swim team. And the coach of the swim team would take everybody on the swim team and we'd go down to the playground, and we'd all get up on the monkey bars, and the coach would sit up at the very top, and he would tell us the story of the purple ape. So this is the story of the purple ape. All right. So one day, there was a man who was very rich. He had lots and lots of money. And he had a great big house. And he had servants. And he had all the food he could want. He had everything he could want. He had cars, motorcycles, lots of money. But he wasn't happy. And that confused him. He wasn't sure why he wasn't happy. And one day, he was looking out the window of his house, and he saw the trash man coming to pick up the trash. And the trash man was whistling. He was just having a good time. He was enjoying himself. He seemed happy. And the rich man thought, how come I have all this money? I have this big house. I have all these cars. Everything is going well for me. And I'm unhappy. And this trash man, who doesn't have hardly anything, he's happy. Why is that? So he thought, I, I, I got to leave. I got to go find out what's wrong. Why am I not happy? So he went out to his garage and he picked his favorite car. And he got in his car and he drove. And he just drove for a long time. Didn't care where, he was just driving. Until he got tired of driving and he pulled over by the side of the road and he left the car and he bought a motorcycle. He got on the motorcycle and he rode the motorcycle for a long time, for hours. Until he got tired of riding the motorcycle and he stopped at a bicycle shop and he bought a bicycle. He got on the bicycle and he pedaled and pedaled and pedaled and pedaled for hours and hours and hours until he got tired of pedaling the bicycle and he stopped and he got on a skateboard and he pushed the skateboard and rode on the skateboard for a long way and, and then he just set the skateboard by the side of the road and walked. And he walked and walked and walked until it was dark and it started to rain. Uh, he thought, boy, I need to find a place to stay tonight. And he saw this house up on a hill with a light on. He said, eh, maybe they'll let me stay there. So he walked up to the house and he knocked on the door and the pleasant fellow answered the door and said, what can I do for you? He said, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm just looking for a place to stay for the night. He said, yeah, sure, that's fine, but there's one rule. Don't touch the purple ape. And the man said, yeah, sure, I, I just want a place to stay. I don't want to touch your ape. Everything is fine. He said, okay, fine. Don't touch the purple ape. We'll give you a room. So he said, okay. So he goes in. He gets this nice room. Pleasant little room, kind of like the room I'm in. He's about to get ready to go to sleep, and the, the owner of the house comes up and, and says, eh, knocks on the door, says, excuse me, you know, maybe I should show you the purple ape. The guy says, okay. So they get up and they walk into the dining room, and there's a, there's a dining room table, and, and the owner of the house takes the flowers out of the vase on the table and sets them aside, and pours out the water in the vase and sets the vase aside, and takes the tablecloth off the table, slides the table out of the way, and then underneath the table is a carpet. He rolls up the carpet, and under the carpet is a trap door. Well, he opens the trap door, and there's some stairs going down, like a ladder sort of stairs. So they climb down, they're going to climb down, they get onto this ladder, and they're going down this ladder into this cave. And as they're going down, he says, watch the bottom step, it's broken. So they, they step over the bottom step and they're in this tunnel underneath the hill and they're walking through this tunnel and they come to this great big gate a big shiny bright gate and it has a lock on it and he says uh, what's, the, what's the combination remember the combination it's 222 two, two. Grace you have to remember that the combination will be important later in the story you remember that 222. Two, two. 
So he dials up 222 on the combination, opens the lock, opens up the great big gate, goes through, and comes to a great big, another door, a great big door. And he's, uh, he says, okay, this, this door is a little different. It has a key. And the key is under this rock here. Remember that, Grace. The key is under the rock. Okay. So he takes up the rock, and he takes the key, and he opens the door, and he opens the door, and they go through. And then they're almost at the end of the tunnel, and there's this great big stone in the way. And he's like, how are we going to get past this? He says, oh, there was a magic word. You're going to have to remember this. Remember the magic word, Grace. The magic word is open says me. Okay? So he says, open says me, and the big stone moves out of the way. And he comes out, and there's this big field. And he walks across the field, and then they come to a forest. And they start walking through the forest, and all through the forest there are these signs on all the trees. Don't touch the purple ape. Please do not touch the purple ape. Remember, don't touch the purple ape. So they walk through the forest with all those signs, and they come to a lake. And there's a little boat. And they get in the boat, and they row about halfway across the lake, and they stop and eat some sandwiches. And they row the rest of the way across the lake. And at the other end of the lake, they tie up the boat, and they come to a desert. And they walk across the desert. It's very, very dry, and they're very thirsty. And they come to the end of the desert, and there's this cave. And they walk into the cave. It's dark. And they walk into the back of the cave, and there's this little cage, a little iron cage. And the man hears this snuffling, weird noise coming from the cave. And they walk in closer, and the man who owns the house takes out his phone and turns on his light, and they can see that inside the cage is this purple ape sitting there, just sucking his thumb. He doesn't look like he's going to harm anybody. He's just this cute little purple ape sucking his thumb. And the man reaches out and says, no, don't touch the purple ape. All right, so they head back out of the cave, and they walk across the desert, and they find their little boat, and they row about halfway across the lake, and they eat some sandwiches, and they row the rest of the way across the lake, and then they come to the forest, and they walk back through the forest, and there are all the signs that say, don't touch the purple ape. Please don't touch the purple ape. Remember, don't touch the purple ape. And they get to the end of the forest, and they walk across a big field, and they find the big rock. And remember the big rock, and there's this a password. It says, open says me, and the big rock opens up. And they come back, it says, they go back in, and they say, close says me, and the rock closes, and now they're inside the cave. And they walk on for a little while, and they come to a great big door. And where's the key? Well, the key's under the rock. So he picks up the rock, and he takes the key, and he unlocks the door, and he goes through, and he closes the door, and on the other side, he puts the key back under the rock on the other side. And they walk on a little bit farther, and they come to the great big golden gate. And you have to remember the combination. You remember the combination, right, Grace? It's two, two, two. So he puts two, two, two on the combination. They open the combination door. They open the great big golden gate. They close the great big golden gate. They walk along until they come to the stairs. They step over the bottom stair because it's broken. Remember that. They go up the stairs, they climb up the ladder, they open the trap door, they come back into the house, into the living room. They close the trap door, they put down the carpet, they put down the table, they put the tablecloth on the table, they put the vase on the table, they put some water in the vase, they put some flowers in the vase. The man goes and says, okay, now I've seen the purple ape, I can go to sleep. So he goes into his room and he lays down. And he tries to get to sleep but he can't sleep. He's just laying there thinking about the purple ape, and he can't sleep. And he thinks, I wonder what would happen if I touched the purple ape. So, quietly, he gets out of his bed, crawls down the hallway. He goes into the dining room. He doesn't want to wake anybody. So very quietly, he takes the flowers out of the vase. He pours the water out of the vase. He takes the vase off the table. He rolls up the tablecloth and puts it neatly on the chair. 
He slides the table out of the way. He rolls up the carpet and very quietly opens the trap door. He goes down the ladder to the stairs. And then he walks down the stairs and he remembers the bottom stair is broken, so he steps over it. And he walks along until he comes to the great big golden door. And he remembers the combination. You remember the combination. It's two, two, two. So he puts two, two, two in the combination. And he opens the great big door. He goes through and he closes it. And then he walks a little bit farther and he comes to the great big door. And he says, oh, this one has a key. Where's the key? It's under the rock, right? So he picks up the rock, he takes the key, and he unlocks the door, and he opens the door, and he closes the door, and he puts the key under the rock on the other side. And then he walks a little farther until he comes to the great big stone. He says, what was the password for this one? Oh, yeah, open says me, and this door opens up. And he goes to the other side, and he says, close says me, and the door closes. The great big rock closes behind him. And he walks across a field, and he comes to the forest. And he sees all the signs that say, don't touch the purple ape. Please, don't touch the purple ape. Remember, don't touch the purple ape. So he walks through the forest, and he gets to the, uh, to the lake. And he sees the little boat, and he unties the little boat, and he gets in the boat. He rows halfway across the lake, and he stops and eats some sandwiches. And he rows the other halfway across the lake, and he ties up the boat on the other side. And he comes out, and he goes to the desert. And he walks across the desert, and it's very hot, and he's so thirsty. And he gets to the end of the desert, and he comes to the cave. And he knows the purple ape is inside that cave. So he walks carefully into the cave, and he goes into the back. And there's the purple ape sitting there, sucking on his thumb. It seems totally harmless. And the guy thinks, what? could I possibly do wrong by touching the purple ape? He just seems like a cute little ape. What's the problem? So he reaches in and he touches the purple ape. And the purple ape goes and bursts open his cage. And the per little tiny cute purple ape becomes this great big enormous scary purple ape. And the man is frightened to death. So he runs out of the cave. But he turns around and looks and the purple ape is chasing him. So he runs across the desert. He's running and running and running across the sand, and he gets so thirsty, but he looks behind him. The purple ape is right behind him. And he runs and runs, and he gets to the lake, and he jumps in the boat, and he thinks, oh, finally I'll be free. He unties the boat. He starts rowing across the boat, across the lake, and he looks back, and the purple ape is swimming, coming after him. The purple ape is coming after him in the lake. And he gets to the halfway across the lake and he wants to stop and eat some sandwiches. But he said, I don't have time to stop and eat any sandwiches. And he rows and he rows and he rows and he gets to the other side of the lake and he ties up the boat and he jumps out and he looks and the purple ape is just coming out of the lake. I'm going to get you. And the purple ape is chasing after him and he runs across the field and he runs and he runs and he runs and he comes to the entrance of the cave and he sees the great big stone. Oh my goodness. What's the password? Grace, what's the password? Tell me quick. Right, that's it. Open says me. So he says, open says me. And the door comes open. And he runs inside and he says, close says me. And the great big stone comes behind him and he stops and says, ah, oh, finally I'm safe. But the purple ape smashes through the huge stone. And the man goes, oh my gosh. And he runs and he runs and he runs and he comes to the great big door. And goes, where's the key? Where's the, Grace, where's the key? Right, it's under the lock, rock. So he picks up the rock and he picks up the key and he opens the door and he goes through and he closes the door and he locks the door and he sticks the key under the rock on the other side and he says, ah, now I'm safe. But the purple ape smashes through the door and he runs and he runs and he runs and he comes to the great big golden gate. Oh no, there's a combination. What's the combination? Grace, quick, what's the combination? That's right, two, two, two. So he dials in two, two, two and he undo, undoes the door and he opens the door and he closes the door. And he steps back and the purple ape smashes through the door. And he runs and he runs and he runs and he comes to the stairs. And he trips over the bottom stairs because he forgets that it was broken. And the purple ape almost gets him. And he runs up the stairs. He climbs up the ladder. He goes into the living room. He closes the trap door. He puts down the carpet. He 
puts the table back. He puts the tablecloth on the table. He puts the vase on the table. He puts some water in the vase. He puts the flowers back in the vase. And the percolate smashes through all of it. And the man, he's very scared now. He runs out the front door. And the purple ape is still chasing him. And he runs and he runs. Finally, he gets to his skateboard. Remember, he had a skateboard. He gets on his skateboard and he skates and skates and skates. And it looks back and the purple ape is still right behind him. He thinks, I need something faster than a skateboard. Well, finally, he gets to the place where he's found his bicycle. He jumps off his skateboard. He gets on his bicycle and he pedals and pedals and pedals as fast as he can. And he looks behind him and the purple ape is keeping up with him, running right behind him. And it's, oh, I need something faster than a bicycle. So finally, he finds the motorcycle. And, ah, this is good. He gets in the motorcycle. And he goes flying down the road as fast as he can go. But the purple ape is right behind him. Finally, the motorcycle is about out of gas. And he finds his car that he left by the side of the road. He gets in his car. And he fires up the car. And he goes flying down the road as fast as he can. And he looks in the rearview mirror. And the purple ape is still right behind him. Just, I'm going to get you. The purple ape is chasing him. Well, the car is about to run out of gas. And the man is just thinking, I cannot escape this purple ape. No matter what I do, this ape keeps chasing me. I'm, I'm just going to have to live with it. So he pulls by the side of the road. He turns off the car. He comes out and he stands by the side of the road and he says, okay, purple ape, come and get me. And the purple ape roars up to him and says, Tag, you're it. And that's the story of the purple ape. What do you think, Gracie? Is that a good story? I hope you enjoyed it. That is the story of the purple ape as told to me by Anton Krucky when I was a little kid. And then Uncle Dave told that story to me again. And that's what we learned at the New Carrollton Swim Team when I was just a little kid. I hope you thought that was fun.